Hi, today is a continuation of my previous video and we were supposed to model our mechanical system and we are going to model spinning gears. As you can see, I have two gears here. We have T in and T out. You have to know that the T out, the torque output is usually equals to torque input multiplied by the gear ratio. Let's model this and see that in MATLAB Simulink. I've already opened my MATLAB Simulink here. And the first thing we need, remember we are going to model a purely mechanical system. Therefore, for now we don't need electrical system. Therefore, I'm going to use an ideal torque source. Because we need the torque input. Therefore, the first thing I need is go to Libre Browser. Go to foundation library, mechanical, then you have to use a uh, rotational elements. Okay, you're going to use rotational elements because you are going to model. Remember, you are modeling a spinning gear. Then we are going to use also some mechanical sources here. Then later some mechanisms. Today our main focus will be on this mechanical library. The first one we need is to pick, we need to use an ideal torque source. These are sensors. We need a source, a mechanical source. We have an ideal angular velocity. We need an ideal torque source, yeah. This torque, we're going to assume this our DC motor that is providing a certain torque to our system. Therefore, you take this, the block, space, control R to rotate. Okay. Make it a habit of renaming your block. I want to rename it as a, a ideal. This a variable. You can be able to vary this. A variable ideal talk source. We're going to assume the torque to the our spinning gears comes from this ideal torque source. Therefore, you always provide S is a control that is directly proportional to R rotational. Therefore, you have to put a certain value to S for you to get an output here. Therefore, we need a uh, S needs a simulink signal. Therefore, we go library simulink source let's use a constant and attach it you can't be able to attach this constant to variable to, to the ideal source why remember my my previous videos i said these are you can never connect two domains directly. You always use a converter, okay? Which is a simulink. This is a simulink to physical signal converter. Therefore, you use a simulink to PS converter. Okay, we are converting a simulink to PS. You can never connect these two directly, okay? Then we need for the R. For now, you can use one value, constant value. You, you always vary this value. You can use one to any value you need that is proportional. The one will be proportional to R. Okay? You can double click here. There's the always, if you're not sure of the units, always use one as a default. Okay? One is a default. Don't worry about input handling. Input handling, I will illustrate in a near future videos advanced videos okay we need a gearbox here you go back to gearbox to to represent the gears that are meshing okay we need go to library go back to simscape mechanical use mechanisms gearbox you have to understand gearbox this is all means output to the shaft you connect R to S. This O is the output. Remember, I said the torque at output 
equals the torque at input multiplied by the gear ratio. For me to get torque twice that for me to get output torque twice the T in, I have to use a gear ratio of two. This means the T out T out will be equals to T in multiplied by gear ratio. Okay, meaning this means C out for S out for the speed will be equals to S in divided by ratio. Okay, we're going to prove this, we're going to see. Therefore, then we need for you to represent spinning. Remember this the, the gearbox is going to represent our gears that are that are already meshing. They are already spinning. You have to use what you call inertia. For rotational elements, use inertia to represent the spinning behavior of the gears. Whenever you have a system that is spinning, it always has inertia. Inertia is symbolic of a system that is exhibiting a spinning motion or rotation or rotation, rotational motion. Okay. You can use uh, let me get you can use the inertia. Let's use the that value, default value. Okay. Then we need whenever you have a, a rotational motion, we need we need damper. You have to dump rotational damper is here. And we can use a uh, damping coefficient. Let's use the default values for now. You connect this one directly to the inertia. Okay. Minute here. I'm making my system this neat. Okay. Then C is for we usually connect C to the reference. Therefore, since our system is about rotation, we have to use a uh, rotational element. Of, we have to use a mechanical rotational reference. As you, as you advanced, you are going to use different references depending on the type of motion at hard. Therefore, I have to use mechanical rotational element here. Reference connect to R. The same. Rotational reference connect to C. Yeah, like that. Okay. Then we need, remember, we need to get the speed at this point. We also need to get speed at this point so that we can do the comparison. Okay. Therefore, we need how can you get the speed? That is angular velocity. You go back to the library. Mechanical sensors. I'm going to use ideal. Let me see your ideal rotational motion motion sensor here. It's a motion sensor. Then you connect this R to where you are measuring. Remember, I said in my previous video, angular velocity is across variable we are getting the angular velocity across not through okay the reason why i'm connecting it parallel to this and i need another one that will be connected at this point at output therefore you can copy this yeah that point the this is a sensor that gives us two, two outputs, but now we have W and A. The, the same case applies this side, W and A. W is where we get our angular velocity, okay? Then at A is where we get angular displacement or angular position. We are not interested in angular position right now. Therefore, you terminate these two. Let me terminate. You go to Library, this is a physical signal sync. You terminate. We don't need it. 
therefore terminated. Same case applies here. If you're not using if you're not using any port, for example, you're not using an A, it's advisable for you to terminate that port. Now we need what? We need now a P to S converter. You know the reason why. Okay. Connected here. Same case applies here. Okay. Then we need what? We need we need scope so that we can be able we need scope so that we can be able to display our values. Okay. We need a scope here. Okay. This one is a input. This one is the output. For now, for the for the C port here, we have we have to connect it. It is similar to C. You connect the C port to reference. Therefore, we just copy that reference. This one we need it here. Control R twice. Rotate. This can connect here directly. R twice rotate control R this here. Okay. Okay, that's better. Okay, no worries. That's better for now. You can make your system become more organized. Okay. Remember, this is a gearbox that is connected to the ideal torque source, R. Then this is the output, this is the input. Output, you connect to the inertia to represent the rotational motion of the gear system, spinning gears. Whenever you have an inertia, you need a damper. Okay. Then now I'm using a default value. Depending on the system you're going to use, you can always change damping coefficient. Then from the, uh, the output, I can be able to measure my my angular velocity. The same case to the input. This is the input. This is the output. We need two more blocks. One is solver. As I said, you always connect solver at any point. I think we are done. Okay. Let me go to modeling a little bit. Model settings here. Taking time, okay. In my previous videos, I said that for the solvers, it is advisable to use ODE 23T. I said ODE 23T for this type of analysis. Let's go to ODE 23T. Okay. As you can see here at the bottom, we have used OD 23T. That's my solver. I can use now for the simulation. I'm going to use uh, 100 seconds. 100. Yeah. 100 seconds. Run. Okay. No input. Oh, it's still running. Continue. Okay. Okay. Let me separate. Then for this, we go to scope here. For you to use uh, two graphs, go to settings, layout, use two of them instead of one. Okay. As you can see, the input is 4,000. This is speed, input speed, angular velocity. The output is 2000 because the gear ratio is 2. If you change this gearbox here, maybe from 2 to 0 0.5, let's see what happens. It's done. Now they swap. The input becomes 250, the output becomes 500. 
That's how you verify your system whether it is functional. Thank you. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Let's meet in our next amazing video. Bye.